great trails build great communities, and great communities build great trails. There are a lot of cities in the country that are embracing recreation. What we have is unique, and it is that urban wilderness combination. It's an amazing mountain biking trail that we are hearing is some of the best in the, in the region. And the opportunity to do that in the, within a city, so you can ride trails for, for three or four hours and then come downtown and have dinner in a restaurant 10 minutes away. It's great for cycling, but uh, you know, during the winter months like, like we are in now, uh, you'll see a lot of trail runners out on the trail and, and hikers. It has multiple use. One is it, it's recreational use, so hiking, biking, there's even some paddling over there at Iams Nature Center. We really geared the project to make it a true mixed use project. We don't want to exclude any sort of user group in, this, in, the, in the urban wilderness. It connects neighborhoods, which is important. It protects green space, which is important. And it preserves some historic sites, the Civil War forts and sites. So it has a, a preservation, a conservation, a recreation, and then a neighborhood aspect to it all. It's actually a system of trails. Um, and there is one main loop that we've got routed out uh, called the South Loop. And if you stay on the South Loop, it's about an 11 and a half mile loop. Um, but you pass through various parks and other open spaces where you can mix and match those trails up to, to have more than an 11 and a half mile loop. All told, there's about 35 miles of mixed use trails within the system. It's really um, the concept of about a thousand acres, right, what we say in the heart of our downtown, that connects parks, historic sites, greenways, uh, neighborhoods through a system of trails and really creates about a thousand acres of urban wilderness. The partnerships for the South Loop Trail have been just unbelievable. We have, of course, the city and county, the local governments. We have Legacy Parks Foundation, which is a nonprofit that has been tremendous in identifying, raising those private dollars uh, to purchase land, which will then be turned over to the city and county in the form of parks. And also, what makes this particularly special for these biking trails is that we have uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of hours of, of, of blood, sweat, and tears from our mountain bikers who have spent hours out there uh, bu basically building these trails. The same people who will be riding on them have been building them. The Mountain Bike Club built a lot of the new trail, or most of the new trail. There was a lot of existing trail uh, that had just been around for years in various parks. It was a great accomplishment to get that uh, completed. Uh, we had a lot of partners on the project. Uh, working with the Legacy Parks Foundation and the Track Club and some private donors, it was, uh, it was just a real showcase on how a lot of different partners got together and got a, a really neat project completed. We have a, a wonderful partnership with the uh, Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency. Uh, part of the trail goes through their property. There's about 600 acres of wildlife management area that has some special uh, restrictions in there for hunt seasons and whatnot. And I'll, most of those trails were already there. We have done a couple reroutes to make those trails a little more sustainable from an environmental standpoint. And they've been a great partner in working with access to their property. We have not gotten any resistance to this whole concept. People like the idea, even if they don't use the trail. They like that in their neighborhood. Um, they like to have that in their city. For neighbors and people looking for places to live, Parks increase property value. People want to live near parks and trails, and we know that there's 10 years of study that tell us that. Folks that come in from out of town, they want to use the trails, and then they want to, they want to come downtown at night. They want to eat dinner, they want to go to a movie, they want to patronize businesses downtown. You know, you can take a, a trip out west and be in a great trail system, no doubt. Um, but more often than not, you're in a trail system with no other amenities but a gas station or a diner. You know, we've got this trail system in the heart of an urban area to where you can, you can recreate during the day and you can play downtown at night. We're two and a half miles to a trailhead, which is a, a brisk walk, but a, a super easy bike ride and a, and a pretty easy run. And you know, Iams Nature Center is about three miles down the road. Um, so in, in our region, in this type of you know, metropolitan area, we are, we're leading the charge. Since the trail opened, in, um, in August, we've got almost $4 million in private property, residential uh, property transfers associated with the urban wilderness. You know, if I live downtown, do I have access to recreation that I don't have to drive to? And with this trail system, that is the fact. Um, not only to the trails, but to the water. I would eat a quick lunch and run across the Gay Street Bridge right into Fort Dickerson Park. 
run around the quarry and run back to work uh, just on your lunch break. We are the largest metropolitan area at the base of the most visited national park. So we know people come to East Tennessee, but to provide them the ease of traveling here and staying in Knoxville. And that's really what's unique about what we have here in Knoxville. The ability to be, truly you could be in the woods all day long and feel like you're in the middle of the Smokies or Big South Fork, drive 10 minutes and be in the heart of a city in an urban area and hear a concert, go to a symphony, go to a movie. So that combination is really unique. Or not drive, bike all of that from downtown into the wilderness and back. All together it adds up to, to a lot of opportunities for people who live here and the potential to build our city as an outdoor recreation destination, which means tourism dollars. For the future of South Knoxville, it brands us. It gives us a, a lot of people reasons to be in South Knoxville. It's something that will never go away. It's going to be a real stimulus for economic development and for just a quality of life issue. So again, this is just the first step of a long process that's going to really be outstanding, not only for the city of Knoxville, South Knoxville, but for this whole region. You will see neighborhoods reinvigorated. It will become the place that people want, want to live. I do think that we'll see it affect Chapman Highway right across Henley Street Bridge and that becomes sort of the extension and they have already called themselves the Urban Wilderness to Trade District so those businesses have already embraced that. It really creates a destination and, and it, it, number one it creates a tourism destination. People travel to areas like this. People want authentic experiences. They want the convenience. What will follow in South Knoxville are the cafes and the shops and places and restaurants and, and brew pubs. Those kind of things that tend to grow up around places where people are recreating. I mean we see it all over the country. We have an amazing community of outdoor enthusiasts. We like our green space, we like our outdoors, we like our land.